Hey, thanks for joining me for another episode of Talking Sass. I am here with the wonderful, the talented Marty Bell. How are you doing, Marty? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good. It's so good to get to talk to you again. I know. It's been forever. It it we were we were like kind of reminiscing about this. It's literally been like what five years since we've seen each other. I believe so. Yeah, and it's crazy because. At one point, like I was staying at your house, we were on road trips all the time together. We were wrestling all the time. And then it was like, all of a sudden I moved and it just, it's like you moved to a different country or something. I mean, really? Right. It's crazy. (laughs) Um, No, but it's, it's, it's really cool though. I think that's part of the beauty of social media though, is even though you've been gone for so long, it doesn't feel that way. Cause I still get to catch up with you know, what you're doing, your, your wonderful, beautiful little son and just everything, you know, and I think it's, it's, it's easy to, to still feel like you're in touch with, with your friends. Cause you still get to see what's going on in their lives. A hundred percent. And you, I mean, you have just like, let's say not even the last five years, like the last 10 years, you have just blossomed into this multimedia. I can do everything. <laughs> all the time and probably all at once at the same time and you're just crazy I can't imagine what your schedule is like even with COVID you're still doing a gazillion things yeah I've been I've been very very fortunate um yeah the last like I you know I think it's hard like sometimes you feel like you're not doing enough or you feel like like you always want more you know you're always striving to do more you're always striving to do a different project bigger project but sometimes I do have to like take a step back and be like hey I've done some cool stuff like I've I, I have and I've been very very fortunate um that even when things didn't I didn't think things were going to work out or things didn't seem to be going you know the direction I wanted them to at the end of the day it always works out so um I have even yeah even during the pandemic, I've gotten to do some really cool things. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. And I just kind of just just keep pushing forward, hoping trying to figure out what's next. And I've noticed that like, you always seem to be like, okay, this happened, but let's, you know, continue to move on. And you're just so optimistic about everything you do. And it's totally there's not let me put it this way. There's not a lot of people in wrestling that are completely optimistic, like all the time. You know, and, and <laughs> obviously, you know, we all go through stuff. There's obviously, you know, life isn't always perfect. And, but one thing that I've, I've just learned over the years with, with acting, with wrestling, with, with life in general is it, it's like that saying, you know, you, you, you get knocked down seven times, you get back up eight. Like that's kind of how, how I've always seen everything. I've gotten to do a lot of really cool things. I've lost a lot of really cool things also, but I, I always know there's something around the corner type of thing. So I'm very much like always like, all right, what's next? Let's do something. I hate, I hate being idle. I hate sitting and like not doing something. So I am always looking for like, what else can I do? Yeah, definitely. And let's start from the very beginning. Cause something I found out while I was researching you is your name hasn't always been Marty Bell in wrestling. Oh my God. <laughs> there was one match. I had one match. <laughs> I have oh. one match at my, so um, I started my training at WWE Hall of Famer's Johnny Rod's school in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before I trained, I was a valet for him. I was a valet for about a year before I even started training. And so I, you know, the fans already knew me as Marty Bell. That's like, that was what they, what the W, the WUW like universe knew me as, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I, I had this idea for like a show that I wanted to do like within the show and I decided to change my name um, because some people do call me Izzy like not a lot but there are some people that call me Izzy like my mom always calls me Martina Isabel so there there is a little bit of like I wanted to involve Izzy more so I wrestled one show I think it was literally my second match maybe I wrestled as Izzy Bell and then I went my cult my my trainer was right he told me he was like he was like, that's stupid. Why are you going to change your name? And I was like, oh, because I have this idea. He was like, that's dumb. And he was right. So I wrestled one match as Izzy Bell. <laughs> but I think that's so interesting because like, I, like, obviously I know you personally. So like, I know yeah. the Isabel part, but like, I don't see you as anything other than Marty Bell. Like yeah. you are Marty. That's just yeah, it's, it's, it I, he was right. He was 100% <laughs> right. I should not have changed my name. And uh, yeah, like, 
I'm telling you, it's very, very, very few people that call me Izzy or that call me Isabel. And if, if people, if somebody does call me Isabel, I'm usually like, do I know you? Like, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I definitely Marty, definitely Marty's where like, it's definitely where I'm staying at for the, for the rest of my life. It's Marty. Well, that, I mean, not soon after that second match, you actually debuted where I met you at WSU for the Mick at the time. And all I remember about that day, like, I, I know I met you in the beginning, like, hi, I'm Stephanie, hi, I'm Marty kind of thing. But like, I watched your guys's match, you and Tina San Antonio against the Boston Shore. And I remember you were set up in a corner and um, Lish overhand chopped you across the chest. And I was just like, oh my God. Like I felt so horrible so for you because that chop echoed through that whole building. So uh, Lish, uh, um, Alicia Edwards yeah. um, is tiny. She's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty small. I think you and me are about the same height. Yeah, Lish I think so. Is we are. And uh, one thing that Lish uh, always said is that because she was always the smallest girl, because she always trained with bigger guys, she always felt like she had to put a little bit extra. I had my first match uh, November of 2009, mm -hmm. and we debuted at WSU in March of 2010. So there really wasn't a lot of time in between. I really didn't have much experience working outside of my school, working with mostly Tina San Antonio. I think I had a match or two with, um, at the time, Roxy Cotton, now she's known as Gabby Gilbert. Um, so I really didn't have much experience outside of, you know, wrestling training, basically. So that was a very, very rude awakening. Uh, that Because it was a big show. It was, it was an anniversary show. It was. Like, that was a pretty big show. And um, I think I may even have gotten concussed that shit like it was it was a lot like it was definitely we were like thrown into the fire but I mean fans liked us so uh we 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 didn't know what was going to happen you know that was the first time that, that might have been like the second time that Tina and I had ever tagged and we just had really good chemistry and eventually uh became WSU tag team champions so. Yeah. And I mean, you went on to do a lot of stuff at WSU. I mean, you're the longest reigning spirit champion with, I think I wrote down 602 days. Yeah. That's, wow. I lost it on the 603rd day. I think it was. Yeah. That's, that's a crazy, especially yeah. for now, like people seem to yes. get bored so easily with someone as a champion. So like, they seem to like every two, three months, they seem to, you know, recycle a champion, but you, I mean, almost two it's whole years. It's crazy to think about too, because like, for example, right now I have been shine tag team champion yes. for 365 days, mm -hmm. but that's, I've defended it once. I'm going to have my second title defense coming up like this week because of the pandemic, because we haven't had a show in a year, but I was wrestling consistently. I was defending the title consistently, um, which actually you were involved in the match that I won it. Um, Cause I won it from, from Jess. <laughs> I know. You know right? Yeah. So um, I, it cut off for a second. So I didn't hear what you said. Oh, um, I said, hmm. hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I believe about. you were a part of that match. I, I believe you were, you were involved in that match. I, um, I but yeah. So Marty. You, you, I'm sorry. What? I would never. No, of, of course not. No, no. You, you were like such a sweet baby angel. You would never have gotten involved in that match. Never. Uh, but so it's it's just it's crazy to think about like just just thinking back on 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 those WSU days. Thinking back of you know we started out at uh, at the Ace Arena and then moving to NYWC where you guys had your uh, War Games match. Like there there was just so many so many good times about that WSU that I wish I wish that we could like like I feel like you should like there'd be a really fun podcast of like a, like a few of us just like reminiscing and talking about those days because I feel like there's so much um that we can talk about of like the original WSU girl that's a great idea actually I might steal that and we'll get back to you on a time that we're going to record that one <laughs> yeah I would def that would definitely be so much fun um because there were just so many like I, I feel like that's really where a lot of us started making a name for ourselves definitely that's and and it's it's crazy to think of like that's also where like we all met. That's really where, that's really where I think like our bond started forming and like 
like look at us now, you know, like, so WSU definitely had a very, very special place uh, in, in my heart. And I know that for, there's a lot of us that can say that as well. A hundred percent. And speaking of WSU on one of our trips, and you knew this was going to come up eventually, we were driving to WSU in the middle of the night. I think we left at like three or four in the morning and around 10 AM we were driving for those who don't know the uh, Pennsylvania area to drive across it is a very long drive. And there's two ways you can go. There's, you can, if you're going to New Jersey, that is. So you can go down Pittsburgh on 76 and pay about 40, $50 in tolls one way, or you can take route 30, which is a little bit more North. And it takes you about a half hour longer, but no tolls. So of course we prefer to go no tolls. Cause when you say, Hey, I need a hundred dollars yeah. for toll money, the promoter laughs in your face. Yes. So that's out your pocket. So we don't do that. So we take the extra half hour, we go Route 30. Well, that goes through Amish country. And on this particular day, around 10 a.m. in the morning, it was February, mind you. So it was very cold. Marty and, Marty and I are sitting in the seats and I'm driving. We're having a nice little conversation. And I happen to notice off on my right-hand side that there's a horse and buggy coming down the hill towards the traffic light, which for us is green. So I'm like, It'll stop, right? Yeah. It's a horse and buggy, no problem. So as I'm driving through the intersection, which I do have a legal green light, I'm like, oh shit. I see this He's horse stopping. still coming at our car and literally at Marty Bell's head. <laughs> and I'm like, so I press on the gas just a little bit so I could try to not get hit by this horse. And so I, I press on the gas, not enough though, I saved Marty Bell's life in this portion though, because the horse hit my back. The ch my his back chest. Door, it was like his chest. Yeah. With his chest full on and a horse is not a small animal. If you guys think horses are small, you don't know anything about, small, uh, about horses. Hits the, the back passenger door, shatters the glass, rolls off my back trunk, and then does like, I, I swear to God, I looked in the rearview mirror and it was like a cartoon. I see this horse like fall on its stomach with like its legs and its arms. Well, I guess it's all legs, right? His four legs outstretched like this and just hit his chest on the ground. I, it looks like a cartoon. I feel like I was watching Wile E. Coyote, but then again, I was in shock too. And I just look at Marty and she's in shock. She's like, what the fuck just happened? And I'm saying the same thing. And we were, I think we were just talking about horses too. Like your, your grandmother or something had horses and my, in yeah, my dad's a veterinarian in Dominican Republic. So my parents, um, my, my family has always had a farm. And yeah. We've always had horses. And, um, I, I was the only one in my family that didn't ride, but I love them. Like they're, you know, beautiful, majestic creatures. Like they're, um, I also feel like this is something that like, I'm, I'm such a firm believer in like everything happens for a reason and like type of thing because that, so that road trip was supposed to be you, me and Allison K. Yes. Allison K wrestled Friday night at AIW and got a stinger. She was already in Cleveland. So basically she was going to meet, you know, we're going to all meet or whatever, and then go from there. Well, Allison K, uh, took like a, I think it was like, she took a pile driver or something, ended up getting a stinger in her neck. And I think she even ended up going to the ER or something. So she ended up being like, hey guys, like I'm not gonna wrestle tomorrow. You know, what's the point in her driving eight hours to not to not wrestle? Yeah. So she ended up yeah. staying home. And I remember us like going crazy, like texting everybody at one point. We had like Tom Dunn, I think we talked to like Eric Ryan. We talked to so many people about like getting in the car with us, and everybody was like, Oh yeah, like it's it was just such late notice, but that probably ended up saving somebody's life. Oh, for sure. Because if somebody had been sitting in the back seat, like, you know, if it was Allison and she would have been asleep, like, or, or just whatever, it, it would have ended very, very badly. I do remember, um, like, we pulled over and we're like, what the heck just happened? Yeah. And then, um, like, I remember, I was like, this is weird. I feel like I was kind of in shock. And then I saw, I saw the horse. And I remember I fucking started bawling because yeah. the horse was dying. Like he was, he was dying there. And I think what happened, the guy who was like riding the buggy, he said he had a seizure or something and lost control. 
but it was it was like traumatizing and then we had to go get a tarp to cut because we we still had to keep driving we still we still had to wrestle like it's so crazy to to think about like we just got into a car accident with a horse (laughs) and we like went to like home depot and got tarp to cover that back window because it was like blown out and then we drove and wrestled and then we like turned around and went home because I don't remember, did we, we didn't end up staying, did we? No, did we? No. And it was funny because I decided that I was not going to drive Route 30 that night. I was going to take the toll road, even if I didn't get the tolls, because I didn't want to come in contact with any more. Yeah, animals. we're like, uh, let's, yeah, let's, uh, we're a little traumatized. It's just, it's crazy. Like, um, I was in another really bad car accident uh, a few years later. Uh, also coming home well this was coming home from New York into Ohio and it's just it's so crazy to think about like we were on the road so much we were in cars so so much that you you really like I feel like you don't there thankfully thankfully there's not as many car accidents as you would think happen because we spent so much time on the road we spent so much time in these cars and driving through the night, you know, driving late, being tired, all of this. And it, it's, I, I'm just very, very fortunate, like to, to have, you know, knock on wood, made it out of every single one of those situations uh, alive. Well, when I was talking to AK on one of the episodes earlier, she mentioned, we were talking, she's like, I'm sure you're going to bring this up with Marty Bell. And I was like, of course, talking about the horse accent, but she said, like, you feel like your grandmother is always looking over you. And I know that something that you have felt many different times yeah. in your life. Um, when that happened, she was still alive. She okay. was still alive. But um, actually, when this the last car accident happened, um, I was driving with my then boyfriend, um, Matthew Justice. And it was so it was a really, really bad car accident. Like th- that one was like bad, bad. Um, I was driving. Uh, I it was really late at night. I was because we were rushing back because I had shine the next day. So we wrestled in New York on Thursday and I had shine on Friday, but I was flying out of Ohio. So mm-hmm. I had to, we were like literally rushing back. And um, I don't know what happened. I literally, I got, like I hit the rumble strips and then all of a sudden I lost control. I, when I was talking about it to somebody that like, it sounds like something snapped in the car because I literally just could not control the car. Like the wheel was like doing this, and so I, we ended up spinning, we ended up spinning out and then smashing into a wall and then a semi truck hit us. Like it was, but I don't remember that part. Yeah. So a semi, um, so another time, uh, Matt actually saved my life because he remembered that we had just passed a semi. So literally seconds before the semi hit, um, on my side, Matt reached over and pulled me towards him and literally seconds later the semi smashed into the car um and both of us walked out both of us were able to walk out the the weird thing is when both of us were spinning when we were when we were spinning um I remembered like this white light around us and he said when we finally stopped the first thing he thought of was his grandfather who was like his grandfather to him is like what my grandmother is to me. Mm-hmm. So he, it was like very weird. And then we were talking about it later. Like I didn't say anything to him about it. Cause I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like it's pitch black outside. There was no, there's no way there was a white light around us. Right. And right. he, um, he brought it up and I was like, I was like, I saw the same thing too. So I don't know, like, I'm sure that I'm sure you feel your mother around you all the time. Oh, and oh, like it's, and, I, you know, I'm sure that there's people watching this that are going to be like, all right, whatever. But I don't know, like, there's just, there's some people that you have a connection with that they continue, they're your guardian angels and they continue. And this has nothing to do with religion. It's just, it's, it's a feeling I have. I feel like my grandmother is always with me. I, I feel her at different times. Um, I, I'm sure that you feel your mom in the same way. And thankfully that day, uh, Matt's grandfather was like looking out for us because it, it, we should not have been okay. We really should not. Like people kept stopping so many. And I, I feel like I was kind of in shock. Uh, I was kind of just like very much like, oh, what the hell just happened? And I was just kind of standing around. And then when the police came, uh, they were talking to us and 
the cop looked at me and he was like, you guys should have died. And I started bawling because it was like, oh my God, you're right. Like we literally could have just died. Like coming, like it was so, I don't know, like I know there have been a couple of like really bad accidents in the last few years that I can think of with like wrestlers, you know, we spend so much time on the road that it's, 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 it is very like wonderful to think of that there aren't thankfully more car accidents, like, because it's a lot of time, you know? Yeah. It's it's scary when you think about it too. Cause like, I mean, you said you've been in these two accidents. I know there was one time I was coming home from shimmer and I was with uh, my friend Diana and there was a car where it's the middle of the day too. Like this is like, I don't know, like two or three in the afternoon after we left shimmer and we're almost back home and um, a car, there's nobody else on the road, but cuts me off on the turnpike in Ohio as we're going back home. And like, I had to jerk my wheel and I spun a couple times or else they would have hit me. And then I had a semi come up behind me and stop. Cause I like, once I spun, I was still in the middle lane. So he saw so that nobody else would hit me. And the cop was like, it's a good thing that the semi guy stopped or else we would have had to give you a ticket for failure to, uh, to control your car or something. I don't know what it was, but I was like, I didn't even do anything. Like, You're like excuse me, sir. Like, I just, I, I just avoided something. It's, yeah. oh, yeah. I was like, it's, it's wild. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. It really is crazy. Like, not to like bring, you know, let's talk about shit down. We'll talk about something like really happy in a minute. You know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll bring this back up, but it, well, yeah. it is, um, like, uh, I, I still have things to talk about as, uh, with WSU. And there was one thing I wanted to ask you about because, I remember you telling me this story at WSU, or maybe it was on one of our road trips, but you have this gorgeous hair that like is so you and so unique. And I believe if I remember the story correctly, people told you before, like you got started or right around the time you got started to never have your hair like you have it, you should always straighten it. And I just think that's so asinine and so sexist. So I'll, some of it, some of it is cultural. Um, yeah. There in the Dominican Republic, uh, things are changing. Things are thankfully changing a lot. But growing up, this was literally called pelo malo, bad hair. Like this was ugly hair. It was gross, and you did everything in your power to not have your hair look like this. So growing up, I had to relax my hair. I remember literally when I was like, I think I was nine. I was gonna do my first communion. My grandmother took me to the hair salon. And she was like, unless you relax her hair, we're not doing her hair here anymore. Cause it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Cause this is to, to go from this to like pin straight is a lot of work and they just didn't want to do it. So then my grandmother relaxed my hair. Uh, but I stopped relaxing it because I realized, oh, I can straighten my hair without having to chemically straighten it. Like I can, I can still achieve that look without chemicals. But then um, when I was at Johnny's, I remember there was one day I came in and one of the guys who was like a producer for Johnny literally told me, he was like, oh, I liked your hair better last time when it was straight. It looked more professional. So that kind of got in my head. And if you, anytime I had a big match, so uh, not our debut, not, I, I didn't, I, my hair was, um, my hair was curly for my debut, but like um, the day that we were uh, like up for the, for the titles, um, the day that uh, Jazz and I became tag team champions, my hair was straight. Anytime that I knew that I had a big match or I knew I had like a big event, I always straightened my hair. And I don't know what happened. Like literally one day I just decided to not straighten my hair anymore. And I started showing up to shows like this and people started taking more notice of me. And that's actually part of how I ended up at Impact. You know, one of the writers said he knew me for years. He had known me from like being around Ring of Honor, doing tryouts at Ring of Honor and stuff. And he just thought that he was like, yeah, I saw you look like a pretty girl, but like there was nothing that stood out about you. You were just like another pretty girl. Until I started kind of just like wearing my hair like this and kind of just like being myself. And um, eventually I ended up, you know, getting tryouts at Impact, eventually ended up signing with Impact. And uh, yeah, like I haven't straightened my hair shit I don't even I don't know I it's been years year I know I I know I did it for my grandmother's funeral which was four years ago so mm-hmm. that might have been it it might it might have been four years since I've uh, straightened my hair wow like 
for me, I mean, obviously I knew you at that time and I knew when you were tag champions with jazz and everything, but like, this is so iconically Marty. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you stopped yeah. like doing that because it like, you're still the same person, but like the personality, I guess is different. Yeah, you it, it is. It is. I remember at Shimmer, you're coming out with the hairspray. I was loving that. I was like, this there's, is so awesome. There's just so much more to play with. And it's also, it's different. And, and, and I'm, it's really cool. Um, I've had like girls come up to me at shows, like fans and even other wrestlers. I, there's a girl out of, um, out of Iowa who one day like randomly messaged me and she was like, just so you know, like when I saw you and like, I saw you with your natural hair, you're this like, you know, like proud Afro Latina and you're like, you know, you're yourself. She's like, that made her feel like, oh shit, I can do this too. Because I, I don't look like, I don't look like everybody else. I don't look like every other girl that, you know, especially at the time when I started. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it is pretty cool. And it's like, cool. I've had like fans at Shimmer come up to me and be like, yeah, I went natural for you. And I'm just like, Really <laughs> that's, cool. that's awesome that's that's pretty cool it's uh it's it's really exciting it's 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 a lot of work sometimes sometimes it really annoys me but you know it's uh I'm very very happy I need a haircut real bad right now because it looks like I have like I don't know what's going on there's like all sorts of things going on there's all sorts of shapes going on but um, oh, I love it <laughs> me who has like zero volume and it's pinned straight all the time yeah. I would love to have some yeah like the hair is always volume. somebody told me one time like the hair is always shinier on the other side and I was like you're right you know <laughs> girls with straight hair want curly hair girls with curly hair are like I wish my hair was straight so just gotta <laughs> have fun with it everybody can't win like even when yeah. like, I try to do like curls and make it super cute it always falls within like yeah. two hours and I'm like and if I, I work for nothing and that's part of why I haven't straightened my hair because I, I am curious like so curly hair is very deceptive mm -hmm. like it looks very short, but like, it's really long. Like, yeah. it's really long. So I've been curious about it and I have wanted to straighten it and just see like, just to see how long it is, just to see what it looks like. But with training and going to the gym and all that, there's no point because literally I will straighten my hair and, and in an hour I'll sweat and then it's no longer straight. So yeah. I'm just like, whatever, I just, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll straighten it sometime. I, I don't have any plans anytime soon, but well, I don't know. One day, maybe I'll get bored and straighten it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now you've mentioned that you tagged with Jazz, which I mean, has to be amazing. But I mean, you've had like amazing tag partners your entire like career. Because I mean, of course you were with uh, Tina San Antonio first. Mm -hmm. You also have Jazz. When you were at Impact, you were tagging with Jade, which we also know as Mia Yim. Mia Yim. And you were part of the Dollhouse with Taryn Terrell and Rebel. I mean- Kong you know, at one point, awesome yeah. Kong. Like and even now, you're you know shine cha tag team champion with Jamie Jameson. I mean, girl, you just and it all and uh, uh, Allison and I are also oh, tag okay. team. We're gonna bring that up too. Yeah, yeah, you and Allison are tagging as the Hex at Shimmer. Yeah, yeah. You guys did that at the Collective. Yeah, and I mean, right now, let's just talk about that real quick because. You're still wrestling at shows. Even just uh, this past week, you were wrestling on a show. What is it like right now with COVID restrictions and everything going on? And a professional wrestler still performing in front of a crowd. It's wild. Um, I was I was like trying to do the math, and so 2020, I we did impact tapings, which actually I only wrestled one night of of during the impact tapings because I don't think I wrestled the pay per view, so I only wrestled one night. And then I wrestled, um, holy cow. And then I think I wrestled, I think I wrestled in Atlanta. And then I wrestled um, at uh, Sh uh, Shine. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then I wrestled at the collective two times. So in 2020, I think I had five matches. That's crazy. I have never. And like, when I first started, I could have five matches in one weekend. Like, that's it, it, it's insane and so obviously like I was I was itching for it like so when the collective happened um I had two matches in the collective I, I was out for the culture and I had shimmer mm -hmm. and um I'm really happy with the way that the collective was run uh they definitely did a really good job with taking care of talent and taking care of fans um 
we had a huge, huge locker room so everybody could socially distance, distance, uh, masks were required. You know, you, this unfortunately is our current reality and we don't know how long this is going to be our reality. So you have to adapt. Uh, when I, uh, another cool thing I got to do uh, a few years ago and I also got to do it during the pandemic, which is also wild, is I was on a TV show for Telemundo and we had a saying that we would say amongst ourselves is, El que no se adapta, muere. if you don't adapt, you will die. And mm -hmm. as like morbid as that sounds, like think about it as a business. Right now, how many businesses have had to adapt the way that they work, the way that they're ran in order to, this is, this is, and I hate, I, I hate when I hear this term, like our new reality, but it is, unfortunately, this is, and we don't know how long this is going to be our re reality. So we, we have to learn how to work around it. So this past weekend was another weekend where, um, like if you were, if you were up from your seat, you could only be up from your seat if you were buying something, or if you were going to the restroom, you couldn't be, you couldn't be like milling around. Everybody had a seat that they had to be at. Masks had to be worn. Uh, people were sitting, they sold tables so that you could like, if you had a family, like, it, like families could sit together, chairs were spaced out. And it's the weirdest thing was coming down to the ring and like not being able to touch people, oh, not yeah. be able to like, um, I make sure I always have a test before um, I wrestle. And obviously, like, it's not foolproof uh, because you can get tested today and then, God forbid, tomorrow, you know, mm -hmm. get COVID. Because, and we, it's just you have to do the best that you can. Uh, this is my job. So, like, it, and, and, and that's the thing, like, especially before the pandemic, literally all I was doing was acting and wrestling. So... When people are like, well, you should get a job. I'm like, this is my job. Like, this is, this is what I do. Like, this is what I've done for all these years this is what I worked for. Um, even like acting, I filmed a commercial for hotels.com during the pandemic. Literally the day I came back from, um, from the collective, I filmed, I filmed this commercial and yeah, I, everybody had to bring a negative COVID test. Uh, we were told that makeup and hair was going to be done on set. So I showed up with zero makeup. I showed up like just ready to go. And because of COVID, we ended up not having any makeup applied. So like there's this commercial that's airing all over the world and Marty Bell has zero makeup. Like I don't even have, I don't even have like mascara on. I'm like, all right, like this is what they want. And it was like strange. Like everything was filmed. Every, you know, everybody on set had to wear masks for socially distant, socially mm -hmm. distance. And then, uh, the client was actually watching through Zoom. Like they had the client, you know, hotels.com, the whoever was in charge was at home watching through a, like, it was just the strangest thing, but we have to continue. Like as entertainers, as performers, we have to continue in the way that we can. And obviously you want to be as safe as possible. You want to take every precaution. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild, but like I, after my match, I literally just wanted to sit there and cry because it just felt like and it makes me like emotional even thinking about it now like when you've dedicated your life for so long to something and it's what you love and having that taken away from you and obviously we've all lost a lot of things like 2020 was hard you know there were really good yeah. moments I was able to find some really cool good moments but like you know I've lost loved ones like it it, it was hard it was definitely very hard and wrestling was such a big part of my life. Wrestling was like, it's the longest relationship I've ever been in my entire life. You know, this is a, uh, this is, so it's, it's, it's crazy. And uh, I feel like I'm rambling and I'm like, I'm trying, I'm like, I'm like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Um, so having a little bit, like just for those 10 minutes of me being in the ring and feeling like, like everything was, it just felt like everything was all right in the world again, you know? And then you, you come back to reality and you're like, COVID's still a thing, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. But I mean, like you said, you have been extremely busy even with COVID. I mean, you mentioned the show that you did for Telemundo, which is definitely something I want to talk to you about because you've done, you did a season there and then you came back for another, you said during the pandemic, you went back for another, I think, what was it, two episodes you did there? No, so um, the first season, uh, I was a part of the, I was a part of the first ever cast of the United States cast. And then, uh, second season, I got invited back for two episodes. For this season, which was the fourth season, okay. 
I ended up doing a tournament, which took three weeks. Wow. But it literally was like, I got called on Monday and they were like, Hey, we have this idea that we kind of want to do. Uh, it's like basically like the veterans versus like, you know, type of thing. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Like, let me know, like, if this is an idea. And then I got called the next morning at seven o'clock in the morning. And she was like, Hey, can you fly today? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? She's like, yeah, <laughs> you fly out today. And so we ended it was just wild. We ended up flying to Miami. Uh, we got put into a hotel. Uh, we got COVID tested. And then from there, we flew on in a private jet. So I got to fly in a private jet. I got to like oh, check awesome. out my, I got to like cross that off my checklist. We flew in a private jet into a private airport to basically just try to avoid, you know, mm -hmm. as much as possible. And then once we got there, we had to go through the testing again. And then we got tested every week. Um, and thankfully, all of us like made it out. Um, I came in, I, I was, uh, I was a runner up, uh, so, uh, uh, from the girls and it was just wild. Like it was just such a crazy experience. Uh, Exatlon like completely changed my life. It completely changed. It changed everything. It changed doing the show made me realize how much I loved wrestling and how much I didn't want to be away from it. And I met so many incredible people that like, even today, like still motivate me and still push me and still like just maybe want to be a better wrestler because all of us were from different disciplines. You know, we had Olympic gold medalists. We had like UFC fighters. My team had like parkour people, like models. Like it was just, it was such an eclectic group of people, but it just worked. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was insane. I definitely did not expect to be going back, especially during a pandemic. So um, it's like that thing. It's such a cliche, but it's like, you know, stay ready so you don't got to get ready type of thing. And that's like, that's honestly what it came down to because I had a day's notice to go compete and I did and I killed it because I was, I was like, I stayed ready type of thing, you know? I mean, you have so many talents. I mean, I even looked at, I do research on everybody, obviously, but like you are, you have lots of information out there. And one of the things on your LinkedIn is your actual, like, resume of everything you've done and I was like holy shit man I didn't even know Marty did half of this stuff that she did and I've been friends with her for years yeah I mean, you've been a host you've been a backstage interviewer these things I knew commercials acting you are in music videos of course you mentioned the hotels.com commercial recently yeah. I mean what is there a hidden talent that you have that nobody knows about or that most people don't know about um I don't know <laughs> I don't know um I, I don't know. You put me on the spot. I just got real hot. I'm like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, I just, I've loved, I've loved entertainment since I was like a little kid. Uh, believe it or not, I used to be like really shy when I was little. Uh, I like, if you looked at me for too long, I would literally start crying type of thing. Like I was, it was, yeah. Like that's what I'm known for my family is like being the cry baby, being like super emotional. But I also think that that's, I am, I am very emotional and I am somebody who feels very deeply but I also think that that's also kind of like a benefit because I feel like it lets me experience, like I experience the highs of the highs. I experience the lows of the lows, but it lets me experience life. And one thing that I've always loved is performing and any way I can take that. Um, I, you know, obviously our, our in-ring career has to come to an end at some point, you know, uh, unless you're Ric Flair and then you can still bump when you're 90, like, you know, who knows, you know, but for the most part, you, you know, so the, I'm, I'm always thinking about what's next. I, there's so many things that I love. Um, I got the opportunity to work in MMA, like to do backstage for MMA. I got to do, I got to be backstage correspondent in the first ever event in the Dominican Republic that that's like huge that I got to do that. And it's something that I, I, I really do love and I would love to keep doing more of, um, I, I would love to keep acting. I'm working on a couple projects now. Uh, like writing and directing there's just so much I don't know I just feel like man you only have one life yeah like, every anything that like brings out a fire in you anything that you're passionate about or anything that even just seems interesting like something that you want to try like fuck it man like what's the worst that can happen you fail okay like is that the end of the world like right I don't know I guess I've never been I'm, I feel like I'm more afraid of success than I am a failure, if that makes sense. Wow, interesting. I, I've never, that, I just had that epiphany. 
I feel like I'm more afraid of success than I am of failure. So like, if it doesn't work out, then like, oops, like, all right, cool. What's next? You know? <laughs> so yeah, I'm always, uh, I'm always looking, I, I, I'm, I'm very like hyperactive. I always want to do something. So. Well, I even wrote that down in my notes, like what's next for Marty Bell. But like, I feel like instead of like, you know, Goldberg has says who's next. I feel like Marty should be like, what's next? What's like next? what like, avenue of entertainment is she going to go into next? You know, um, haven't made any Hollywood movies yet. So maybe that's next. I don't know. Like wow. there's, there's just, I don't know. I just, I, I love entertaining. I love entertainment. I love, and I, I, and I, and I, I want to do everything. Like there's really nothing that I, I'm not married to one thing. Obviously like wrestling will always be my, like my love and wrestling is like, I love wrestling. Like, obviously this is like, I can't let it go. Like, but also if anything, I cheated on acting with wrestling. I started acting when I was like seven, so eight, so eight. The first time I was ever in a production, I was eight. So really I cheated on acting with wrestling and I fell in love with wrestling and, um, but I was also able, cause I, I'm, I'm like, I'm actually like classically trained. Like I went to acting school, I graduated, did all that cool stuff. And then I just took a long break from acting. I don't know, I was just burnt out and I decided to, you know, that's when I started wrestling. But like, what has always been my strong suit in wrestling is my talking, it's my personality and all that. And a big part of that is just bringing everything that I've learned in, in acting and bringing it into wrestling and kind of marrying the two. So I don't know. We'll see. Well, I think there's there's so many great people within the wrestling business that do take acting classes or have moved on to do acting because they're so intertwined. I mean, yeah. like when a lot of people say that wrestling is fake to me, like I'm always like, we're just stunt people that don't yeah. have a wire. Like, yeah, literally. So yeah. I feel like acting and and wrestling are kind of one of the same. If you have that bigger personality, you can transform that into yeah. some kind of acting for you, whether it's on stage, like at a theater or, you know, like The Rock and John Cena have done. Yeah, the of course. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I, I don't, and that's the thing, like I, I was talking to a friend about that. Like sometimes I don't do a lot of interviews um, because especially now it's tough when, like, um, you know, when I just wrestled in Nebraska, I had so many people coming up to me being like, all right, so where are you signing? Like, what, what's next? And I'm like, I'm, I, I, you'll find out soon. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, shit, I hope I find out soon, you know? So it's, I, I don't know what's next. I'm, I'm working. And that's, and to me, that's like the important thing. I get up every day with the intention of, uh, of making something happen, whether it happens tomorrow or it happens in three months, uh, I know something is gonna happen because I'm gonna keep working towards something happening. And the only time that you're guaranteed to not be successful or not make something happen is when you stop. Mm -hmm. And I don't stop. So I'm a little energized, Bunny. So, so something's got, you know, something's gotta, something's gotta work. So. Definitely. Well, well, Marty, it's been amazing talking with you. And I know I could talk with you for hours I know. <laughs> done it in the car many, many times. <laughs> but let's tell everybody all your social media, where they can find you. And uh, that's about it. So um, you guys can catch me on Patreon. I'm also on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Marty Bell. My Twitter that I never use, but I'm going to try using more this year is Marty Bell. And Instagram is where... I interact with people more. Instagram is where you can really, really find me. And it's marty.bell and it's B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Make sure there's an E at the end. Um, but yeah, Patreon is definitely, um, it's been, I know, I don't know how you feel about it, but I've had a lot of fun creating on Patreon. I definitely feel like, especially during the pandemic, I feel like this was very helpful because it sometimes, it made me, when, when I was stuck at home, not doing anything, it made me be like, oh, I got to put makeup on today because I want to take some pictures and I don't, I'm not going to spend all day in my pajamas watching Netflix. So yeah. Uh, yeah. it's definitely been, definitely been a lot of fun and I'm, I'm really glad to, to have this platform. So I'm excited. It's yeah, it's going to be cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Marty. You're awesome. And you. see you guys next time. <laughs>